Welcome back to another reaction stream. We'll be going to head to Gamic 30 and talking about the amazing blank Gamic 29. There's so much to discuss. I got 16 points. Yes, I activated my free hit. I wasted it. I mean, you just got to laugh about some of these things that have happened. And the one time I thought I finally got a return from one of my players, Jero Bowen getting the assist for Antonio's brace, it was disallowed. So this week has been something else. And as soon as I saw Region get that red card, concede that penalty, I knew we were in for something absolutely amazing. And FPL just constantly delivers. You've got to laugh about it, you know, otherwise you'll cry. And it's not worth crying about this game, that's for sure. Let's get straight into your questions from the offset. I have got a red arrow on my free hit. Lord have mercy. If Ariola kept that clean sheet, I think I would have deleted my account, to be honest. And I probably wouldn't be making these videos or streams anymore. But you've got to take the good and the bad along the same way and have some fun along the way. So let's get straight into your questions. ZX Trenix says disaster. I completely agree. I can't say anything else apart from that. I think for those that free heard, I think it was an absolute disaster. Unless you went for Manise and or Gibbs White and Chris Wood, you're looking at a very average game week and a free hit wasted. Pankaj says 19 points and a free hit. Just my luck. Well, 19 points. There's people out here. Look at me. Yeah, we're fewer. So uh, you got to take it. Welcome to Unis Gamer, as always, always a pleasure. Singh says 16 points, disaster free hit, anyone lower? I'm pretty sure there are some people with lower, maybe not many, but there is the odd few. Arthur says free hit can piss off, agreed? United, United, United. Yeah, congratulations to Manchester United. That was an amazing game of football between them and Liverpool. I have to say, as soon as Rashford missed that chance at the end, I thought Liverpool were going to win this, but nope. <laughs> it turns out Liverpool ended up kind of fumbling that in extra time. So credit to Manchester United for going through. I think Liverpool did mismanage that extra time, but it's very difficult at Old Trafford, even when Man United are at their worst. Ken Back says free hit 16 points. Very small red arrow, thankfully. Same here. Um, it is what it is. You've got to laugh about it, really, um, because it's just an absolute ridiculous set of circumstances. Region being sent off, Tony 99th minute booking, Boeing getting an assist and then that being chalked off. So many things went wrong this week. I was kind of fearing the worst in terms of Ariola, but thankfully... Zaniolo, thank you very much. My hero of Gamic 29, you ruined that guy's FPL points this week. Otherwise, I'd be crying. MOHD says, I got 36 points, no free hit. Well, you're the winner this week, I have to say, unless someone's got even higher than that. Fair play to you. That is amazing. Dry Hill says, this week of FPL was the biggest piece of dog poop ever. Honestly, I have to agree. You know, if I did well, I'd probably be a bit more diplomatic in my answers, but there's no filter today. There really isn't. Alex says, hi, mate. Took a minus eight for Bowen, Elanga, and Tony. Worked out brilliantly. Lol. Only good news is I saved the free here for 34. That's great news, mate. Honestly, enjoy it. Uh, probably bringing in Salah next week and wild cutting in 31. That looks like a solid plan. And of course, we'll have a much clearer idea of those teams doubling in 34 and 37. And it looks like Chelsea are unlikely. If not, it's not. they're not going to double basically in 34 but they will double in either 35 or 36 and of course in 37 so a few doubles are kind of set in and locked like man city and chelsea and gimmick 37 and then it's about the other gimmicks and when the doubles kind of fall under barry says play the free hit zero returns for me same here mate same here so welcome to the club also, what a match of Liverpool and Man United. That's the best part of the weekend. Even though I'm not a Man United fan or anything like that, it was a great game of football uh, because Blank Gaming 29 was an absolute disgrace. It's not in the title. Let's think about Gaming 30. Think about positive things because Gaming 29 can get in the bin. Uh, what is the best wildcard, 30 or 31? It's all team dependent. I always say this. I don't want to sit on the fence, but it honestly is applicable to everybody. I think for a lot of people, including myself, I think 31 looks better. But the advantage of wildcutting in 30 is you have a clear idea of those teams doubling in 34 and or 37. And also you can triple up on certain teams like Liverpool and that could really benefit you. But um, yeah, I think those that didn't free hit this week, of course, have massively benefited. But uh, in terms of wildcard, I think both of those t uh, game weeks are fine. Also gimmick 34 or 35, that's also pretty good. But my preference is with gimmick 31 at the moment. Barely got four points above non-free hit team disaster. I haven't calculated that and I probably won't because I want to save my, you know, mental strength and my mental health uh, for the time being, FPL-wise. 16 points, zero returns, except from Region. 
mate. That guy, literally his 69th Premier League game, his first ever red card in this competition. You've got a laugh. You really have to. Otherwise, it's just not worth it. FPL is supposed to be for fun, after all. Callen says, hi, Dylan. 21 points on the free hit. That's pretty decent, actually. <laughs> Green Arrow, what do you think? Watkins and Bowen to Salah and Muniz. Minus four. I have to say, for those that went for Muniz, fair play. Uh, a great return this week in, uh, you know, just a mud fest, really. I, I can't really describe it in another way. Uh, I don't mind Salah and Muniz from minus four, but selling Watkins at home to Wolves and even Bowen away to Newcastle, don't mind that so much. But selling Watkins, I'm not so sure, mate. Um, I can see what you're doing. It's just in the near future, I wouldn't be surprised if Muniz starts blanking and you see the likes of Jimenez and Broya getting more minutes. But it does look great, especially for the next two game weeks. I'd be tempted to do it. But don't make early transfers. We've got that international break and so much can happen between now and the Gamic 30 deadline. Alex says, removal of Burnley and West Ham. Clean sheets were a killer for me. Still hopes weren't high. I'm not going to lie. I was praying for that West Ham downfall because of Ariola. I hate that guy FPL wise. Um, as for uh, Burnley... Yeah, I mean, I don't really care about that. So if you got that, I would have said fair play to you because Tony didn't do anything in the first place. But this week has been awful for the vast majority of people. I think probably 1% of the FPL populace, um, if we can describe them as that, have actually benefited from this week. No one can get more than two points from me. Yeah, um, I was actually, <laughs> I tweeted something earlier about Bowen. I should have captained him because he got a clean sheet point. Not even that went ahead so it's been absolutely awful for a lot of us especially those free hitters fpl ambrose says 14 points with zero returns but i still have my free hit safe for gimmick 34 honestly i would have rather that get two less points uh obviously i got 16 this week i played the free hit i think that's not too shabby to be honest having the free hit and wild card for the last seven eight gimmicks of the season is a great position to be in uh zubin says any idea which teams are most probable to double in 34 great Question, mate. Qu great question. So according to um, Planet FPL, they're saying the following teams can double in 34, but it's not set in stone. So Arsenal, Bournemouth, Crystal Palace, Everton, Liverpool, Sheffield United and Wolves could all double in 34. But having said that, all of those teams could also not double in 34. So that's all up in the air. We won't know until the Gimmick 30 deadline pretty much. So there's plenty of time for all of that to be set in stone. But uh, yeah, that would be the answer to your question there. Uh, let's bring up the next question by Neil. Well, the next statement. 29 points. That's great this week, honestly, which... Uh, Sounds crazy when I say out loud. 36 points. I'd be celebrating, mate. I'd be opening the biggest bottle of champagne like a Formula One driver if I were you. Fair play. Jamie Hay says, let's go. Enjoy yourself. Uh, hopefully you are doing much better than I am, FPL-wise. Elliot says, big red arrow, 400k to 510k. Yeah, I remember, I think you said in the deadline stream yesterday that you were on a set of green arrows. You were doing pretty well. Uh, so that is a shame. I'm considering using my wildcard to get and facilitate Haaland and Salah, as well as getting rid of double gimmick stragglers such as Ake, Doughty and Van Dijk and so on. Thoughts? I would need to know the rest of your team to give you a definitive answer because I still like Van Dijk for the next two gimmicks actually, and even for the rest of the season you could argue. With Nathan Ake, that's understandable. I wouldn't really want him for the next two gimmicks against Arsenal and Aston Villa at home, but from gimmick 32 until the end, Man City have a great run of fixtures, but in that crucial FA Cup game, Ake was benched. So there's a lot to weigh up, of course. It's not a simple yes or no answer, but at the moment, I don't think that really requires a wild card, in my opinion. Be sure to let me know the rest of the context. Marco Tomic says, bench Robinson and Sufa on the free hit. Yeah, I benched uh, Sufa myself with Robinson. I actually told people to bench him and not to start him anyway. And Leno, I ended up being an absolute fool. And this game week has been incredible from that perspective. Who is blanking with 34 and are there any other expected blanks? So a few weeks ago, maybe even a few days ago when I checked... It was Fulham and Spurs that are likely to blank in Gimmick 34. And then those teams I read out earlier could double in 34. But that isn't set in stone. Nothing is confirmed just yet. And probably by the Gimmick 30 deadline stream, we'll have a much clearer picture of how things are going to look like. 
Elliot Enright says, I took a minus eight hit for Son, Bowen and Tony, two points. Yeah, not going to lie. I, I said this, you know, if I were to take hits for any players this week, they would include those three players you mentioned, as well as Madison and Watkins. But apart from those five, I'm not really too eager to take those hits for players in game 29. Um, it's even worse than I expected. I thought it'd be a low scoring game week, but this has really taken the cake. You got a laugh. You really do. Still a green arrow with 25 points, mate. If I had 25 points uh, this week, I I'd honestly just be celebrating in a pub somewhere. Uh, that is incredible. Foremi FC says 12 points, 9 players down to 78k. Well, that's a great rank, though. I'd definitely prefer to be in your position than my one, FPL-wise. Should I worry? Have my free hit and bench boost only. Well, not having a wild card could be detrimental, but you do have that free hit to kind of compensate in a way, especially for Gimmick 34. Um, it's not too shabby. You've got two chips left. There are some people with nothing left in a worse rank than you. So I think you're fine, but you need to get that free hit and bench boost spot on, in my opinion, because the wild card is by far the most powerful chip. 22 points, Green Arrow. <laughs> It just sounds ridiculous when I say it out loud, doesn't it? Jared C says, Evening, Dylan. Bowen or Bailey for Salah? Both will allow me to get Haaland for Morris next week. Um, I'd rather sell Bailey because of Aston Villa's fixtures. So if you can, I would keep Jared Bowen. But it's not like he's an amazing FPL asset right now. Uh, he was very disappointing this week, of course. 13 points, Red Arrow. Yeah, mate. Uh, I do feel for you, but don't worry. Gamic 30 will be much better. I do promise you that. Opened the app yesterday to see 10 points and 3-0 Fulham. I had to laugh. You can't do anything else, can you? Um, yeah, once I saw that Reggie on red card, for me personally, I kind of writ off the game already. I thought, yeah, I've got that sensation that nothing is really going to go right. Not even one return, which is abysmal. MF says 27 without the free hit and with Reggie on. That's pretty good. Would you rather have your free hit or wild card? Uh, definitely the wild card. And I'm not saying that because I've got the wild card and I wasted my free hit. I always say this. The wild card is by far the most powerful chip. The free hit is second. And then you could argue between bench boost and triple captain. You could maybe say the bench boost is slightly better. But yeah, I think the wild card is the most powerful chip. But I'm not going to say, you know, I'd love to have a free hit by now. I wasted it. I'm not going to admit it. I hold my hands up. It's a shame I did, but I think the wild card is definitely better for most people. Rune says, ended up going Manis and had Robinson long term. Huge week with no free hit. Fair play, mate. You've got to enjoy it. And I'm a Fulham fan, so W. I mean, what more can you ask for, really? Uh, Cole says, hi, Dylan. How does this game week impact us non-free hitters? Well, of course, there's no guarantee the free hit will be amazing in the future, but it surely can't be as bad as those that free hit this week, in my opinion. Um, you can use it in a week like 34, or maybe a small double gimmick like 35 or 36, depending on when the Chelsea double falls under. And you could really benefit from that chip much more than I did, for example, or many other free hitters. It was actually a record um, in terms of free hit activations in gimmick 29. So uh, I think really it's a massive W for those that didn't use the chip. Um, now, if I didn't use the free hit, I would have probably taken a minus four. So I've probably gained, I don't I haven't made the exact calculation to be honest, but I've gained something, but it's not enough to justify the free hit. I've wasted it and I hold my hands up. 29 points on the bench, says Mike. I feel for you, mate, but FPL is just a, it's just a bad game. I was going to say something pretty bad, which would have been demonetized instantly, but let's keep it PG. Speedy Ready TV says, how do you like this wildcard? Well, I'll be making a wildcard video in the next couple of days or weeks, so don't worry about that. But you say 17 this week, free hit saved. W. Uh, Petrovic, Kelleher, Gabriel Stones, Gusto, Adogi, Trippier. Liking the look of it so far. Saka, Son, Salah, Palmer, Madison, Haaland, Muniz, Darwin. Madison will become Foden in one or two weeks. That's a pretty solid plan. I like it. Not entirely sure about Trippier. I know the fixtures are good for Newcastle until gimmick 35, but I don't trust them defensively. Everything else, though, is spot on. John Stones, maybe... Look, I'm really nitpicking at your wildcard team here. John Stones is kind of in out of the team. They're kind of managing his minutes, making sure that he's available for the run-in and for the crucial games. I don't think he starts most matches in the Premier League, if I'm being completely honest. But... I think every other pick is very sound, to say the least. Wildcard 30 got Manisa at 4.5 million. Enjoy it, mate. And uh, Wildcard 30 looks pretty solid. This week is the Jurassic Park uh, gold blue meme. Need to check that out. Maybe my brain is 
being a bit fried here, but uh, need to check that out to verify your comment. Wildcard gimmick 30. Yeah, I think those that didn't free hit in gimmick 29 are probably wildcarding in 30 or 31. So either way, this gimmick 29 is kind of dead ending a lot of teams. You are using a chip either way. You either free hit in 29 or you wildcard in 28 to set up 28 and 29. And also some people are wildcarding later on in 30 or 31. So this gimmick has been a disaster for most people. 23 points without a minus four and free hit. That's massive. 19 points this week. Massive green arrow. Fair play, big man. I'm happy for you. Not happy for myself, but... It's good to see some people doing well in the live chat. Joel Goddard says on, or Goddard, on Gimmick 30 wildcard, after the FA Cup results, I have no clue who to get anymore. Don't set in or lock in your wildcard teams just yet. We should have more information over the next couple of weeks and more clarification on which teams exactly double and or blank in 34 and consequently those that will then double in 37. What has happened to FPL over the last few weeks? I don't know, but Gimmick 28 was kind of a troll week for most of it. Then at the very end, I salvaged something. Decent Green Arrow, but this week has been a disaster. Worst points Gimmick 29. I think it's my worst ever Gimmick total, period. Uh, there was one week where I sold Trent as part of a minus 24, because like I said, when I first played this game, I was really just playing for fun. Wasn't giving an absolute crap. Um, I took a massive hit. Trent got like 20 points that week against Leicester. And I still got more points than this week. So uh, it goes to show how bad Gimmick 29 has been. I think Wildcard 30 can get players before their price rise. Well, of course. Um, but I still think those that free hit in 29 can still have a decent platform for the rest of the season. And potentially save the uh, Wildcard for later in Gimmick 34 or 35. But it's just wasting that free hit in 29, which is the main issue. Is it worth saving Wildcard until 34 itself? It's ultimately team dependent, mate. It really is. Um... I don't know your team, the context, which players you have, who you're looking to bring in, how many changes you'd make. All of that plays a big part. I still think for some people it makes sense to wildcard now in gimmick 30 or in 31. Manis already gone up. Salah is um, going to go up very soon. Yes, and he scored today, of course. Came off a bit early. And like I said earlier, Liverpool really fumbled that at the end. Let's go through a few different screens. So let's first of all go through the FDR and Newcastle are now top up until Gemic 35. But remember, there are blanks and doubles to take into account in Gemic 34. So this will change over the next couple of weeks. Forest, Liverpool, Bournemouth and Everton complete the top five. If we then look at the bottom teams, that includes Luton Town, Arsenal, Brighton, Crystal Palace and Burnley. In terms of predicted points, Haaland is top against Arsenal with 7.6. Then you've got Salah, Hyunming Son, Jackson, Tony. Isak, Madison, Palmer, Foden, and Solanke. In terms of price changes, only two price falls set to happen tonight, according to Fantasy Football Hub. Trent Alexander-Arnold and Canate, so a Liverpool duo defensively, both set to go down in price tonight. Let's see if that ends up happening. If we then go to the most captain player in Gemi 29, Hyunming Son in the top 10k was captained by 89% of managers, almost 90. Then you've got Tony in second, he got one point. Watkins, he blanked. Solanke didn't even do anything, of course. Madison blanked, Bowen blanked, Morris blank. I mean, where do I have to go? For Fana, with 0.06% captaincy in the top 10k, is the only one to have returned there alongside, who else? Gibbs White. That is just absolutely poor reading, but that is FPL for you sometimes. If we then go to Draft Hound once again, they are recommending Ariola to Kelleher, and uh, if not, Dubravka to Kelleher. So they're really backing that transfer for the Liverpool shot stopper, and they're also recommending Zabani to Gusto. And I'm actually, I mentioned that in a recent team selection video, buying Gusto, but not for Zabani. Instead, it'd probably be for uh, Alfie Doughty instead. So let's go to FPL.team very quickly. So I could make that one free transfer, sell Doughty who faces Tottenham away, then Arsenal away for Gusto, but it means no Mohamed Salah. The only way I can really get him is by taking a minus four hit. So I need to think that through. There's plenty of time before the deadline. I will be on holiday very soon, but the plan is to get all the usual UCL Fantasy and FPL content out on the channel. So all the videos and live streams that I typically upload 
But uh, yeah, Gusto is very accessible for me. I can easily get to him. But Salah is a completely different story entirely. So for those of you that went for Morris, you sold Haaland for Morris in Gimmick 28, I still wouldn't really be too um, you know, upset about that because you can get Salah now in Gimmick 30. And a lot of people like myself will be struggling and it might need a minus four hit, for example, to get that done. So let's now go back to my FPL team, which is absolutely amazing, by the way. Gimmick 29 is amazing. I've absolutely loved every second of it. Uh, and also get through all your questions. Be sure to drop a like if you haven't already. It'd be massively appreciated as always. Um, yeah, it's the most interactive FPL channel you can get. The same goes for UCL Fantasy as well. H-Sing says, save the free hit. What weeks would you free hit bench boost with a wild card in 30? Off the top of my head, I'd say free hit 34 and bench boost 37. Gimmick 37 is more likely to get more doubles. Uh, and also in 34, you might get a combination of blanks and doubles. So that makes the free hit ideal in that sort of gimmick. But certain results like Wolves losing in the FA Cup has diminished slightly the appeal of a gimmick 34 free hit. But it's still much better than gimmick 29. There's no sugarcoat in that. Wasted my wild card early in gimmick 26. Now I'm worried can do Neto to Salah. But I have Senesi and Region. I'm worried about price falls. As long as you have a decent defensive free this week, I wouldn't be too concerned because price changes at this point. Uh, sorry for the flickering light, by the way. I'll try to sort that out and make sure that doesn't happen again. But um, yeah, in terms of price changes, I'm not too bothered at this stage, to be honest. So Sal is the priority. If you can get to him, I'd highly recommend it. And also Neto is set to go down in price fairly soon. If not tonight, it will happen at some stage before the Gemic 30 deadline. The latest news is that Neto could be out for the rest of the season. Repen says, buy wildcard 31. Can't afford all ideal options. Wildcard 30, unlimited transfers, so can change if any international injuries... Yeah, um, that's why a lot of people love wildcarding during an international break. That makes sense. But I do like the Gimmick 31 wildcard because you've got that Arsenal Man City fixture in Gimmick 30, which certainly isn't ideal. Not sure why the light is flickering. It's like a, a first time that it's happening. Cole says, hi, Dylan. Was this week a win for the non-free hitters? There's no doubt about it. Unless you took like a minus eight or a minus 12, something ridiculous like that. And, you know, you got what, less than five points, I think it's a it's a W for those that um, didn't free hit. Good point about the fixtures, certainly for Wildcard 31. Yeah, of course, look, FPL is down to interpretation. I'm only offering my opinions. I sometimes get things wrong. Uh, Gaming 29 is one big example of that. But um, yeah, I think for a lot of people, Wildcarding in 31 is probably the ideal game week. Tech XEO says, hi Dylan, 20 minus four on non-free hit. It's pretty good. Horrific week. Still have bench boost, free hit, wildcard to go. Starting to make wildcard drafts now. Do you think the current landscape is better for free hit 34, bench boost 37, or bench boost 34, free hit 37? Um, as things stand, and of course, I might change my opinion over the next couple of weeks, depending on the confirmation of certain fixtures. I think free hit 34 and bench boost 37 looks best, but that could certainly change by the next deadline stream. Daniel says, same team with you. Robinson last and Leno on my bench. To be honest, though, who predicted a Fulham clean sheet? Absolutely nobody. Otherwise, you would have started him. Uh, 21 points is a green arrow. Crazy game week. What the bloody hell is happening with this light, man? Honestly, I'll try to fix that uh, in a short while. But um, yeah, honestly, I don't know what's happening with the lights. Yeah, I mean, I got 16 points. I was kind of hoping and praying for a green arrow, but it wasn't enough. Um, thankfully, Ariola didn't keep a clean sheet, though. Thank you, Zaniolo. Uh, Zubin says Foden and Morris to Salah and Darwin minus four. Play the wild card in 31. Yeah, um, that looks pretty solid. I mean, selling Foden is always a bit of a risk, to be quite frank. But getting Salah, I think, justifies that. And Darwin facing Sheffield United at home in Gimmick 32 looks amazing. Even Brighton next week looks great. 21 points and up to 126k. Hope all is well, Dylan. Yes, it is. Not FPL wise, but uh, other than that, pretty good. 42 points, no free hit, wild card in 27. That's amazing, in my opinion. To get over 40 points, I mean, I'd bite your hand off for that. I feared Doughty and Region price drops, so acted quickly. Yeah, that's fair. But like I said, I'm not really too fussed about price changes at this stage of the season. I don't think it's that relevant. But then again, that's just my opinion. And of course, every 0 0.1 million can benefit you, especially when you're wild carding later in the season. But in my opinion... Really, most of the value build up has already happened um, in the remaining nine or eight gimmicks of the season. It's not too relevant.
Kunal says hi Dylan, 46 points this week, had triple up of Castagna, Robinson and Muniz and also have my free hit. Well, that's incredible. What more can I say? Uh, that's a double win in my opinion. I started Manise, but bench Leno, Sufa and Robinson. At least you started Manise. Look on the bright side, mate. A lot of people didn't have Manise. They wish they had him. They might have had him on the bench. Um, that's still a W. Of course, you always wish or you kind of hope for what you could have done. It's not too bad. Uh, Vias says, I have no words about this game week. Only positive was the Man United versus Liverpool result. Happy for Manchester United. Appreciate that you're positive for further game weeks. I will play the rest of FPL without top four teams. Yeah, I mean, I won't guarantee that myself i probably will go for top four teams so to speak but yeah you, you gotta have fun if you if that's the way you're gonna have fun playing the game then so be it but um i'd maybe urge you to reconsider because some of the top four teams look pretty good 300k still very good uh it's not great to be honest it's my worst ever rank i'm hoping i can get into the top 100k i take that right now um but yeah this week has been a disaster Hello, Dylan. Right now, would you remove Douglas Louise or Bowen to Salah for Gimmick 30? Tricky because Douglas Louise has that home fixture, right? Against Wolves. But I'd rather sell Douglas Louise still. Because Villa's fixtures turn for the worse in Gimmick 31. I think West Ham still have quite decent ones for the near future. So if I had to pick, I'd rather keep Bowen and sell Douglas Louise. Yeah, Palmer is on fire. That was a great assist for Madueke, I think it was, at the very end. Um, that was a great, you know, kind of back heel there. 26 points, but 27 on the bench. Still 26 points. It, you know, still pretty good this week, especially if you didn't use the free hit. Hi, Dylan. Uh, been a great week. Solid 16 points. I love being a Liverpool fan. I'm crying inside. Look, football and FPL is full of uh, ups and downs. Um, I'm quite surprised by the Liverpool result. I thought it would be 2-1 Liverpool. And uh, once Rashford missed, I was, you know, kind of certain in my heart that Liverpool would win. But... There you go. That's the magic of the FA Cup. SOCLH says, I would have 24 if I didn't bring in Region for a hit. Wish I listened to you, man, but uh, fear of missing out. At least I got Manis. Well, there you go. 24 points with Manis. I'd be very happy with that. Yeah, with Region, I think there was a few people who asked me, should I take an extra hit for Region? And in most cases, if not all, I said no. Uh, I wish I just didn't go for him in the first place. That was a disastrous pick. You know, for the free hitters, wild carders, and those that bought him in for a hit. Thoughts on Eze from Gimmick30. Um, in a recent team selection video, it might have been my final team selection. Uh, so the last video I published uh, back in, what, Friday? Yeah, I talked about buying Eze around Gimmick33, 34, in preparation for a double in 34, which is potential. You know, that's possible for them. Um, not sure if I buy him right now, though, if I'm being honest. I think the priorities would be loading up on Chelsea with their future doubles in mind and also Mohamed Salah and more Liverpool assets. And Liverpool are very likely to double now in Gimmick 34. We'll be looking for Salah double gimmick, triple captain advice from you, mate. Um, yeah, if you still got the triple captain, I think you could be looking at a huge score from the likes of Salah, Haaland, Son later in the season. So yeah, uh, keep an eye out for that. I'll try to give you the best advice possible, but it all depends on when those fixtures fall under and when we get that confirmation. GT says Green Arrow this week, 22 points, though 2.6 million has started uh, quite late in Gimmick 10. Uh, do I take a minus eight to get Foden out for Salah or minus four to get Son out to Salah? I'm not going to lie. Both transfers are, you know, there's a massive exclamation mark, Metal Gear Solid style that's popping around my head. I'm not so sure about that. I'd rather sell Foden because the next two fixtures against Arsenal and Villa are tougher, but Foden can still do well there. And with Son at home to Luton, you don't sell him for a hit, even for Salah. So uh, if I had to pick, it'd be selling Foden for a minus eight, but that doesn't look great. Let's now quickly show you my Twitter and Instagram. Be sure to follow me on those platforms whilst I saw out the lighting. It's kind of a rare issue in these videos. So uh, yeah, let's see if I can get sorted why the light kind of bugged out there i think it's all good now on it as soon as i say that it literally turned off so uh yeah i'm gonna have to i'm not even sure what's happening there but be sure to drop a like i know it's kind of weird you know this has not happened before in a stream but uh, drop a like smash the subscribe button check all the links in the description below every single video and live stream is available in podcast format on spotify and amazon music let's see if i can actually get this done and fix the lighting it's not a big issue but uh yeah one of my secondary lights is kind of bugging out right now not sure exactly why come on damn it work uh yeah i might have sorted this out you know, hopefully
give me a second. I'm, this is kind of a, a rare occurrence on the channel. I promise. I really do. Those that watch regularly will know this doesn't happen often. So, uh, yeah, now this, this light is just really bugging out. So, uh, hopefully it doesn't happen again. But uh, let's go back to my FPL team. Amazing. 16 points. What more can we say about this amazing Blank Gaming 29? Uh, keep supporting the channel. It helps out a lot. There's going to be more UCL Fantasy and FPL content out on the channel in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I am quite far behind, aren't I? In the live chat. Yeah, but I'm catching up slowly but steadily. Remy FC says, if you were in my position, who would you take out for a minus eight? No wild card. Have Rashford, Sanessi, Region, Pedro, Neto, Tony, Morris. Have 7.3 million in the bank. Oof. Um, tricky one. I think Rashford could be quite useful, uh, actually, even though I'm not a big fan of him FPL-wise. Sanessi could double in gimmick 34. So I think for you, the big priorities to sell will be Pedro Neto and Region. I think those are the two you want to sell. Um, not sure how you could maneuver this because you can't do Neto to Salah, unfortunately. Yeah, you'd just be a bit short. That would be the preference. Um, you know what? If you don't have Salah and you want him as soon as possible, I'd sell Rashford to Salah and I'd also get rid of Region potentially. Uh, but even Morris and... Um, and I'd say Pedro Neto are sales too, but you have to prioritize, don't you? 29 bench points, only 21 on the pitch. Yeah, but that should be a green arrow for you, right, Gary? I think you went for Manis, right? I think you told me you went for Manis in one of the comment sections uh, recently. If so, then fair play. Uh, Repent Master says, bench boost 34, free hit 37 instead of the other way around. Look, it's a possibility. I'm not going to rule that out. And either way, whether you use the free hit in 34 or 37, it's surely going to be better than 29. But uh, my current preference is to free in 34 and bench boost in 37, but that could certainly change. Um, Radon says, Watkins to Manise and Fernand to Salah in gimmick 30. Now, I could do something similar for a minus four hit, but I'm not so sure. Selling Watkins at home to Wolves and Foden at home to Arsenal, and you'd probably want Foden back by gimmick 32. That's not ideal. But of course, Salah is the one that really makes that worthwhile. And you've got Manise away to Sheffield United. Um, at the moment, I'd say no, but come back to me in one or two weeks' time for my final and definitive answer because I could certainly be on a similar path to that. Looney22 says, so close to bringing in Manise for 29, but decided to be a sheep and went Tony instead. One day, I'll actually start trusting my gut. 13 points after a minus four and was still only a relatively small red. Yeah, um, to be honest though, Tony the birthday boy, away to Burnley, You've also got Manisa home to Tottenham. I think most people would pick Tony in that circumstance. Not just the birthday thing. Forget about that. I just added that for a, you know, to kind of justify my own decision. Um, yeah, it, it's just it is what it is. But yeah, back in your own gut is always important. But I think going for Tony isn't necessarily a bad decision. Um, Ankel says in a wild card thirty one, do you think it's a good idea to buy free Chelsea, Gusto, Palmer, and Jackson, and sacrifice Son or Foden, or go the latter two and not go Jackson? Uh, go the latter two and not go Jackson would be my advice. I still don't trust Jackson in front of goal, and I think Gusto and Palmer are by far the best options for Chelsea. Tech says it's impossible to make a wild card draft without knowing the fixtures and whether to plan for free at thirty four, bench boost thirty seven, or bench boost thirty four, free at thirty seven. I agree. So that's why you've got to wait for that confirmation for the exact times that these fixtures fall under. When we get those doubles, once we get that clear picture, I think that sets our chip strategies for the rest of the season. M O'Connell says 29 points minus four. Pretty good. Uh, nine players didn't free hit, but got Muniz so I can get Sal in wildcard 30. That's probably the perfect scenario in your situation. Elliot says, I think I'll use my wild card. I need to bounce back after this rough game week. Squad is Ariola, Debravka, Doughty, Van Dijk, Borro, Saliba, Ake, Saka, Son, Bowen, Palmer, Foden, Watkins, Solanke, and Tony. Um, your squad looks pretty good, but I think you could slightly improve on your goalkeepers. As for your backline, probably the same thing, actually, especially on Doughty. The rest looks pretty decent, to be fair. Uh, midfield looks really good. Forward line is pretty solid, too. But yeah, I, I definitely think it over, Elliot. Don't lock in the wild card just yet would be my advice. When are the doubles and blanks going to be announced? Uh, by the gimmick 30 deadline, so in around game, two gimmicks time, or in two weeks time, we should have a much clearer picture of which teams will double in gimmick 34. 
and as a result, we'll know which teams will double in 37. Uh, Music Kiwi says 27 points with a green arrow. I'm so confused because it's a terrible week where uh, you're in the desert. If you get a bit of water, enjoy it. Elliot says, let me know if you need more context to discuss my gimmick 30 wildcard idea. I think I would. Um, I mean, you did put your whole squad, which is a lot of context, but yeah, maybe in terms of which ships you have remaining, that would help. Just because, for example, if you have a bench boost, you could then maybe theoretically save the wildcard for later in the season and then wildcard in 34 or 35 and bench boost in 37. But you did provide plenty of context. Um, I think your squad is pretty good, actually. Marco Tomic says, is wildcard 36 a good idea to set up double gimmick 37 bench boost? Uh, yes, but I'd rather use the wildcard a little bit earlier if possible, at least in 34 or 35. It's not a big deal, really. Uh, and wildcarding straight before a bench boost can really work out for you. But um, yeah, my problem with wildcarding later in the season is the fact that you're kind of using the most powerful chip with only a few gimmicks to spare. So you are slightly diminishing the potential of the points you can gain from that chip. Why do people free hit this week with those uh, Bottas fixtures? Thanks for the uh, London slang, James. It never made any sense with free hit uh, with 34, 37. Love your work as always, Dylan. Now, I understand what you're saying. I, I also agree from that perspective that the fixtures were terrible, but some people had three or four players only in Gemic 30, in, sorry, in Gemic 29. And with a free hit, you prevent any hits from being taken. You also gain at least five or six players extra. And from that perspective, I think that's absolutely understandable. It's just a, I'd say a good decision, bad outcome. Now, for those people who had seven, eight players, you know, with a minus four hit at least, um, and they free hit. I think that was the wrong call. And I said this in my deadline stream. Now, I personally had five players. I could have gotten to seven with a minus four hit. Now, that would have been better in the end, and the free hit would have given me more points in the future. But I do think in a lot of cases, the free hit was justified. There is an element of sheep mentality, herd mentality, but I genuinely believe for a lot of people, especially those who struggled to get to five this week, the free hit was justified. RJ77 says 15 points in the team and benched 15 more. Very annoying. Lost out to rivals by no more than 10 points through luck. That's FPL. Um, there's always going to be an element of luck in this game. Uh, same with UCL Fantasy. Any fantasy game you play, you got to take on the chin, but I'm sure you'll recover in Gimmick 30. You reckon Gordon should be fit? He played against Man City in the FA Cup yesterday, so yeah, um, he should be good for Gimmick 30. Yeah, uh, fair enough. Thank you, JC Snooks. I'm not sure why the light was flickering. I could notice it myself. That's why um, I wanted to, um, you know, sort it out. Music Kiwi says, is it often to get around 20 points and move up 200k? No, uh, no, it isn't. So enjoy it. Um, you know, just, yeah, just enjoy it. I mean, I wish I had a green arrow this week. Elliot says, I wish we could go back to the first half of the FPL season with no blank gimmicks or doubles, just pure vibes. Yeah, that's true. Even the doubles this season have been very underwhelming, but I think I've gotten green arrows in those two doubles in 25 and 28, um, even early in the season. I mean, this week has been just awful, really has. Is it time to get rid of Tony? I'm not sure if he doesn't care, but Brentford are really struggling. They're not getting a consecutive run together. They're struggling against the worst teams such as Burnley. And to be fair, you know, that red on red card changes things. If he didn't get that red, who knows what would have happened, but... Yeah, Tony has been very poor. I wouldn't recommend buying him just yet. I'd rather go for Manise, even Hoyland, uh, not to mention Erling Haaland, Watkins, despite the poor fixtures coming up very soon, and several other strikers like Darwin Nunez, dare I say. Um, yeah, Mustafa, I'd love to create a wildcard draft, but I don't think now is the time. I'll save that for a separate wildcard video. So just check out uh, my channel in a couple of days' time, and I'll try to get a wildcard video as soon as possible. And also have more thought into it, um, if I made one now, it'd be pretty terrible, I think. Um, El Mata Muertes says, If I had stayed with my team from last week, Leno, Doughty, Watkins, Bowen captain and Consa for 16 total, I would have had more points than today. 15. What a waste of a free hit. Yeah, I agree. It has been a waste of a free hit, but I think it's a case of good decision, bad outcome in your case. 52k, green arrow on 21 points. Good stuff, Gary. You're having a great season. Hopefully you can push on even further. Joel Goddard says, which players would you get on wildcard 30 regardless of fixtures? Uh, Salah, no doubt about it. I'd love to have Salah as soon as possible. Uh, Saka, despite facing Man City away in Gemic 30, is still a great shout for the rest of the season. 
I do like Watkins for gimmick 30, but not afterwards, which sounds a bit strange, but that's my kind of take on it. Um, bit of a tricky one, but it also depends on who doubles in 34 and or 37. So Bournemouth could double in 34, so you'd probably want one of Solanke or Zabani at least. Um, but yeah, Salah definitely springs to mind. Solid 16 points, so sorry, minus four hits, so solid 12. I'd rather that than use the free hit, mate. So it could have been worse. The light played the free hit and is crying. Yeah, mate. <laughs> uh, what can we say? Um, Drat FC says Palmer, Saka, Madison, Son, Elanga, Salah for a hit. Not really too keen on Elanga, especially after his performance this week. I mean, he played well, but for him not to come away with anything was very disappointing. He had an assist uh, denied by goal line clearance and also a goal by the same thing. So... Yeah, I think Palmer, Saka, Madison, Son is great, and Salah. Not Elanga, though. I wouldn't really recommend him for the long term. I watch Region. Region Lee. Great stuff. Keep or sell Foden? Ideally keep, but I don't mind selling him for the next two, then bringing him back by gimmick 32. But um, yeah, I'd probably say keep if you can. Um, Elliot says, I have a wildcard draft with Salah, Saka, Son, Foden, Watkins, and Haaland alongside others. That looks pretty good. I'm just wondering what your defensive line is and if you have any weak points in your starting 11. If not, that looks very solid. Thank you to those that are tuning in, by the way. We've got over 200 people watching. Be sure to drop a like and get the stream to over 100. It costs nothing and it also helps the channel a lot. Uh, so that'd be greatly appreciated. A lot of you also tuned in for the deadline stream, which is always great to see. We're looking to grow this channel even further. We're on Discord, the also Reddit. I'm also on there now. Um, you can become a patron or channel member. There's also Spotify, Amazon Music. Check all the links in the description below. The same goes for Draft Hound as well, which I did show you earlier in this stream. But uh, yeah, uh, we've been streaming already for how long? Wow, almost 50 minutes. Uh, time does fly when you're having fun. Uh, Amin says, hi Dylan, who would you sell for Salah? Palmer, Gordon, Saka, Foden or Son? It's tricky because Gordon has back-to-back -back home fixtures and we all know how good his record is at St. James's Park this season in the Premier League. Saka, Son are ideal picks to keep for the rest of the campaign if you can but with son you could arguably sell him in gimmick 34 uh sack is not desirable this week but he will be from gimmick 31 onwards palmer is a must-have for me with the what well, two upcoming doubles and also burnley at home in 30 um if i had to sell one it's between foden or gordon and i'd probably sell gordon which isn't ideal i have to say that you know i have to emphasize that point but yes yeah, between those two I definitely keep the rest. Who is the priority sell out of Doughty, Cash, and Region selling for Gusto this week? Um, well, Region is suspended, right? And it's a straight red card. So um, he's going to be out for some time. Let me just double check that and make sure because, you know, Premier can be a bit funny with their rules. Uh, Region will be out until the 3rd of April, which will be in Game Week 31. So he's only missing one game against Manchester United, and he was there earlier this season on loan. Um, tricky one. I think it's between Doughty and Region from those players you mentioned. Um, I still like, um, well, no, Cash is actually awful, isn't he? he? He was benched today when you most needed him. They're all terrible picks, if I've been quite honest. You know what? I think I'd sell um, Cash at home to Wolves. Could actually pay off with all the injuries that Wolves have. I just don't like Cash. I've said this so many times this season. Let me actually make a quick maths app. Should I do that? Maybe my maths will be off and you'll all laugh. But, you know, his last return was back in Gimmick 10 against Luton. Five points. It's just unbelievable how bad Cash is. You know what? I'd probably say sell Cash. I really just don't like him as an FPL option. But probably ask me in a week or two's time for a better answer. Wildcard team says Mustafa, Ariola, Dubravka, Borro, Zabini, Gusto, Aitnuri, Gabriel, Salah, Son, Saka, Foden, Palmer, Haaland, Tony, Moniz with 0.4 million in the bank. What would you change? Akanji or Gavardio? Not necessarily. I don't like Man City defenders for the next two game weeks. And even after that, when City's fixtures turn for the better, I'm not a big fan because rotation will be rife with the FA Cup semi-finals and potential final. You've also got the Champions League. Um, but yeah, your wildcard team looks good. But just bear in mind, it is subject to change depending on which teams double in 34 and or 37. Uh, Lalek says free hit 34 or 37, got no bench boost. Once again, it depends on when these fixtures fall under, but I'd say Gemic 34 looks slightly better, but that could certainly change by next week. 
Uh, thank you, Fermi. You're responding to everyone, even with 200 viewers. I'm glad to be on your stream. Make sure to like the stream, guys. Thank you very much. Even with 1K viewers on UCL Fantasy, we also I also try to do the same thing. Of course, it is more difficult then, but I still try my best. Thank you very much. Native Faith says, any idea how big the double gimmicks will be in gimmick 34 and 37? Still have a free hit, no wild card. I try to get the latest projections by uh, FPL.team and also Planet FPL. Of course, that's to, be, that's to be taken with a pinch of salt. It's not absolutely set in stone, but I think it does have a pretty good you know, idea of when they'll happen. So according to FPL.team right now, and this could be subject to change, in Gemic 34, we could have Bournemouth doubling uh, against Aston Villa away and Wolves away, and also Wolves facing Arsenal at home and Bournemouth at home. Now in Gemic 35, we could have another small double. Um, so Brighton and Crystal, sorry, Brighton and Chelsea will be the two teams doubling. So Brighton would face Bournemouth away and Chelsea at home, whilst Chelsea would face Aston Villa away and Brighton away. Gemic 37 should be the biggest double gimmick left in the season, and that could include Chelsea, Arsenal, um, Crystal Palace, Everton, Liverpool, Man City, Man United, Newcastle, Sheffield United, and Spurs all doubling. But after the FA Cup results tonight, we could see a few differences. So, for example, Arsenal could double in Gimmick 34 instead. The same goes for a few other teams like Crystal Palace. So, a lot is still up in the air, but Gimmick 37 should be the biggest double gimmick left in this season. Lalek says, out of all teams who played Fulham, um, has the most clean sheets this season, but hardly anyone considered Fulham defenders or Leno. That's fair enough, but I don't think anyone still would have predicted a clean sheet against Tottenham. Um, and even their recent record is still in Spurs' favour, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, you make a good point, but ultimately it's all done and dusted and a lot of us wouldn't have gone for these Fulham assets anyway. So glad I kept the free hit, mate. <laughs> it's a win, in my opinion, for those that saved it. Dreaming FPL says, Watkins to Darwin, KDB to Salah, Bodro to 8 Nuri, minus 8 worth it. Um, I'd say no. The reason why you're selling Watkins at home to Wolves, I think that could be a mistake. Selling Watkins isn't a bad idea necessarily, but I'd probably wait until Gimmick 31 or a bit later. As for KDB, he's got a great record against Arsenal, but selling him to sell is fine. It's just selling KDB this week. Uh, Bodro to 8 Nuri, when he's facing Luton Town at home, that's where I'd say no. 8 Nuri could double in Gimmick 34, but in my opinion, it's not worth a minus 8 hit. Elliot says, I have my wild card and bench boost left. I was planning to use the wild card and get Haaland and Salah back and get rid of stragglers from past double gimmicks and blanks that are unwanted now. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, I think it's probably best for a lot of people, even if you're kind of set on wild carding, to wait a little bit because that information of the confirmed doubles in 34 could really play a part. If, for example, in 34, we barely get any doubles or blanks, you probably could save the wild card for a little bit later and use that wild card instead to optimize Gamic 37, which could be the high ceiling Gamic. Uh, Cohen says, hey bro, still have the wild card, triple captain and free hit, when to use ideally. Um, I'd say wild card in 30 or 31, but of course it depends on your team setup if you're happy with it as well. Um, free hit in 34 and triple captain in 37. That would be my take. You could even use the triple captain in 35 or 36 on someone like Palmer, for example. So that's also another possibility. Thank you, Dra FC. Always good to see you. Um, Amar Arif says, my squad after I made an early transfer. I wouldn't recommend early transfers now, by the way. We've got like two weeks until the deadline, but um, fair enough. I got Palmer, Saka, Salah, Foden, Solanke, Watkins, Haaland, but my defense is Powell. Eight Nuri, Zabani, Gabriel, and Doughty. Who should I change for the next transfer? Um, your squad looks pretty settled, and you've got Salah already, and you've got Haaland. Now, the only kind of big miss is the lack of Spurs assets against Luton Town at home. So if you could, Saka to Son as a one-week pun looks great, but you'd probably want Saka back by Gimmick 31 when he faces Luton Town at home. Um, that's really a nitpick, though. It's a real nitpick. I think your defense looks weaker. That's the position where you could upgrade. Gabriel's great for the long term, but not for Gemic 30. Uh, Alfie Doughty is probably a sell in the weeks to come. No doubles in well, for the remainder of the season. And also, Luton Town are shocking defensively. Aitner is pretty good, so he's fine. Zabini could double in 34, so that's not too shabby. Uh, Pau Torres, no doubles. Aston Villa are quite poor defensively. So yeah, I think your defense is the biggest priority. But in terms of attacking transfers that could really pay off this week, I'd say Saka to Son and then reverse the transfer 
in Gimmick 31. Elliot says the fence will be Ariola, Kelleher, Bradley, Gusto, Van Heck, Consa, Saliba, and Byrne. Um, it looks pretty good, but I'm not going to lie. Van Heck, I'm not a big fan of. Um, also, Consa and Byrne. I know why you're picking these players. You know, there's some good fixtures there for Newcastle up until 35, a potential double in 34. But yeah, I really can't justify Consa, Van Heck, and Byrne for me. I really can't. Um, by the Gemic 30 deadline, we should get some confirmation of the Gemic 34 doubles. That should be it, David. I bought him an East. Fair play, Alex. Enjoy the points. Milner says no free hit and on a green arrow with 17 points. Yeah, it really is. Courage says cr uh, cash is crazy. Yeah, I think he's a terrible asset. I really do. Uh, ben says, hi, Dylan. What transfers should I make? Morris to Manis, Solanke, Tony to Solanke, Manis, Douglas Luiz to Salah. I would rather sell Morris, as bad as Tony is, because of the fixtures I keep him, and I'd sell Morris to... This is difficult because if Solanke doubles in 34, I'd definitely go for him over Manis. If he doesn't double, then you could definitely make a case for the Fulham Brazilian. Uh, Luis de Sala makes great sense. I have no problem with that whatsoever. Despite the home fixture for Aston Villa next week um, in Game McFay. But my preference would be Morris to Solanke and Douglas Luis de Sala. Thoughts on today's FA Cup match? It was great. Between Liverpool and Man, uh, Man United, it was an incredible match. Uh, I didn't expect it. I thought that Man United would be knocked out, especially after Rashford missed that big chance before extra time. Singh says, Foden, Saka, Palmer, Bowen, Son. Who do I get Salah in for? Um, Bowen. Because you'd want Saka back in Gemic 31, and Foden's a good option from Gemic 32 onwards, and even against Villa... In Gemic Fay 1, he looks pretty good. So, yeah, I think Bone is the one to sell there. Aaron Vanham says, Hey Dylan, who should I play for next Gemic? Garnacho, Foden, or Richarlison? Thanks. Has to be Richarlison for me against Luton Town at home. As much as I don't rate the player, I do think as an FPL as he has been much better in this calendar year. And I guess Luton Town, I'd back anybody. Even Team Averna could do something. Uh, Cole Palmer says, Hey Dylan, uh, what would Wildcard 30 look like? Um... Uh, of course, a lot could definitely change when I make the video. I'll put more thought into it. But roughly, I'd say Ariola probably stays in there just about. You could also go for either Neto in goal or you could maybe go for David Raya. Um, you can also go for an Arsenal defender in either Gabriel or Saliba. I'd also recommend a Bournemouth defender potentially if you're going for Neto in goal. So Zabani could be quite useful in Gemic 34. I'd say 8 Nuri looks great. Even the likes of Palmer. Uh, well, Palm, of course, goes without saying, but uh, Gusto and or Bradley um, in the midfield. Yeah, Palmer. Um, I'd still say Saka, Salah, Foden and probably Son. In the forward line, I'd probably go for Haaland, Solanke and I'd also go for Manis. So something like that could really work out for you. I'll give it more thought over the next couple of days and try to get a wildcard video out pretty soon on the channel. And you can also comment your thoughts in that video too. Uh, Amar Arif says, who do you prefer captain for Gemic 30? Salah, Palmer, Watkins, Haaland or Solanke? I think Salah or Palmer. Yeah. <laughs> I do like the others you're mentioning. You know, Haaland could do something against Arsenal. Watkins are home to Wolves in that Midlands derby is not too shabby. Um, yeah, it has to be Salah or Palmer for me and I'd go for Salah. My current captain is Palmer, but that could change. It's between him and Son or my current captaincy. Uh, for you, I'd definitely go for Salah. First blank for Spurs in 40 games. Yes, they're actually second in the all-time list of consecutive Premier League games scored in. Um, Arsenal have the record of 55 games and Spurs um, had 39 games in a row and it ended in the 40th. Tech XEO says that doesn't seem likely at all that all of those doubles will be in 37. Yeah, like I said, that was probably um, projected before the FA Cup results tonight. Some of them could happen in 34. I think it'll be more balanced than what I said um, a few minutes ago or close to an hour ago at this stage. There are many of those 37 fixtures that can and will likely be put in 34. Instead, I agree. I do agree. I was just listing off the, um, the current projections on FPL.team, which are... Definitely subject to change. Will you focus on Chelsea assets when those doubles appear? Yeah. But if I'm being honest, I think Palmer and Gusto are by far the best options. And I'm not that keen on the third choice. Maybe Petrovic in goal. Um, Jackson could be a shout. But I just don't really rate a lot of these uh, these options in every single position. 
Milner says current transfers I'm thinking of. Kirkes and Foden to Robinson and Salah, minus four. Then 31 Morris to Haaland. Then do Madison to Foden and 33. Looks pretty great, actually. I actually rate those transfers. Not a big fan of Robinson or Fulham defenders still. I do expect them to kind of troll those that buy them in right now. But Salah's definitely worth it, 100%. Um, and Foden to Salah for a minus four. I'd still do it. As much as I rate Foden as an FPL asset, it's a good transfer. Uh, 31 Morris to Haaland, great. No problems with that whatsoever. And Madison to Foden, 33. Pretty solid plan. I think that's the right thing to do in your situation. Elliot says, as a West Ham fan, what's your thoughts on the VAR taking the longest check in Premier League history? I actually wasn't aware it was the longest check. Uh, it did seem like a very long time. Um... I didn't see the game itself, if I'm being honest. I saw the Chelsea-Leicester game and also the other FA Cup match between Man United and Liverpool. Um, but yeah, it's look, VAR is quite incompetent. Um, it's not even just VAR. It's the people who are in charge of that. Uh, I do think the premise uh, is quite good, but the referees in charge are just not reliable at all. Um, let me know if you think it was the right decision, but uh, for them to take that long is a disgrace in my opinion. Did this allow Southwick's goal in the 90 plus 6, says Elliot? Yeah, exactly. I think it was by the 101st minute, if not later, that they uh, disallowed it. Wildcard active, says Enrique. Good luck. Uh, good to see you once again in the stream. Miguel Rodriguez says, Hi Dylan, I switched um, Fafana, Leno and Bassi to Fleck in Tony and Borro before the deadline. I'm really sad right now. Yeah, I can understand that, but... Look, a lot of people didn't expect a clean sheet for Leno, Bassi and all these Fulham assets, so... That's understandable. Fafana was a decent pick for Burnley, um, but a lot of people still went for that double up in the Brentford defence, like myself. So you can't really beat yourself up about it. It's been a disastrous week for many. Um, it could have been worse, and I think you can really bounce back in game 30. Very harsh opinion on my wildcard defence. Yeah, maybe it is, but I'm just trying to be honest. Um, I just don't like Burn. I really don't. The fixtures are good. You're right to pick him for that reason, but I just don't trust Newcastle defensively. Dreaming FPL says, what would you do? Neto, Dubravka, Borro, Gabriel, Bradley, Zdabani, uh, Lamptey, KDB, Saka, Son, Foden, Palmer, Watkins, Haaland, Solanke, 0 0.7 million in the bank. Well, Salah would be a great transfer in for you, but it would probably require selling KDB. So it's up to you whether you do the transfer this week. Um, I'd only do it for free, KDB to Salah. I wouldn't do it for a hit. Now, in terms of the weakest link, I think it's probably a defender. And I'm looking at Lamptey, and I think you could upgrade on him. Now, this week, you could play Bradley, Zabani. Yeah, I think you need to upgrade that third defender. I mean, Podro, to be fair, is quite decent against Luintown at home. Um, so it's not a big priority, but I think Lamptey's the weakest link. You should upgrade him if possible. And KDB to Salah is a no-brainer in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Tech says, will Nkuku be an option once the potential double comes around? Yeah, for sure. And I actually liked Nkuku. In preseason, he was in my original draft, but then he got injured and that kind of put that plan in the mud. Um, but yeah, I think Gusto and Palmer are by far the best options. Wildcard photo draft, there will be a video on it, so just keep your eyes peeled for that. I won't do it now because, I mean, I listed some options already off the top of my head, but I can put much more thought in it and give you a better wildcard draft later on. Thank you, Dreaming FPL. Much appreciated. Emma O'Connell says, who to start next game week? Madison or Saka? Madison. Um, I think City is still a really tough game. Saka's got a good record against the top six clubs, but Madison at home to Luton Town is the much better option on paper. Liverpool says Courage. Yeah, very disappointing. Um, I was very surprised by uh, that kind of capitulation in extra time. Tex says absolute robbery. If it takes that long just to award the bloody goal, at that point, they're just finding things to disallow it. Yeah, um, I saw some tweets about that and I can share that sentiment. I would have said the same thing if it was my club involved as well. RJ77 says, I could have had a front eight of Son, Saka, Salah, Foden and Palmer with Watkins and Solanke and Darwin, but no Haaland. Worth the risk for the rest of the season? There's always a risk, of course, and Haaland will have a double later on, probably in Gimmick 37. That front eight looks great, but Watkins' fixtures are terrible from Gimmick 31 onwards, and there's no doubles for Aston Villa. So it's Wolves at home this week. That's great. But after that, it's Man City away, Brentford at home, Arsenal away, Bournemouth at home, Chelsea at home, Brighton away, Liverpool at home, and Crystal Palace away. I just I just don't like that. I really don't. As good as Watkins is, there is definitely a debate to sell him 
in Gimmick 31. Amar says, between Pau Torres, Eight Nuri, Zabani, Gabriel and Doughty, who do you prefer to start for Gimmick 30? I'm only planning to take three defenders, which Pau, Eight Nuri and Zabani. Well, Eight Nuri is a good option for the wild card and for the long term. He could even double in Gimmick 34, but I don't like him for Gimmick 30 away to Villa. Uh, so in terms of starting in Gimmick 30, well, to be fair, you're not really sport for choice. I'd probably go for Pau Torres, Eight Nuri and Zabani and Benj, Gabriel and Doughty. Uh, it is okay to put Gabriel as a sub against Man City. I just don't see Arsenal keeping a clean sheet at the Etihad. Would have been a bonus assist for that South Czech goal for FPL2. Yes. Uh, literally, I actually tweeted it and I had to delete it instantly because, yeah, I mean, I was starving out here. I wanted one return in Game Week 29 and I couldn't even do that. Fair enough. I watch your wildcard draft. You probably know better. Well, not necessarily. I mean, look at how I did this week after all. Uh, a lot of people would have done better, that's for sure. But yeah um obviously stick to your gut you know back your decisions and your instinct and you can watch my video and maybe there's one or two differential picks that maybe could make a difference for you but always back your gut and your decisions why did we go for flecking again well in a week where not many clean sheets were anticipated and in the end what one team kept one in fulham <laughs> against tottenham um yeah brentford had the best chance on paper against burnley and look, that Reggion red card did change things, so we don't know what would have happened if the Spaniard actually kept his senses and wits about him. Milner says, do you think that Watkins Palmer... For some reason my chat just... Um, it just refreshed, I don't know why. Um, yeah, it's working. Okay, that's good. Uh, Milner says, do you think that Watkins Palmer and Saka are season keepers? I'm looking at downgrading Morris to Fofana and Watkins to Haaland in the coming weeks. Realised I can't do Morris to Haaland in one free transfer. Well, I like all three of those options. I think Palmer is a must-have. He's got two double gimmicks pending. He might not double in 34, but in either 35 or 36 and 37, Palmer's a great option, even for the triple captaincy. As for Saka, you could make a case for going for Son instead, or the likes of Foden, but I do like Saka a lot, especially after gimmick 30. Now, with Watkins... He's a keep for Gamic 30 and probably a sell, or he's entering that territory in Gamic 31. But ultimately, I think Palmer is the only must-have from the three options you mentioned because of value, the price is absolutely amazing, and also the pending doubles. With Arsenal, only one double gimmick um, which is left, either in 34 or 37. And with Aston Villa, no double gimmicks are left there. So uh, I think Palmer is the sensible option in that scenario. In terms of Fafana, he has been in good form recently, but I do prefer Manis. If you were to go for a budget forward, I would recommend the Brazilian from Fulham. Liverpool just made three at 34 strategy worse. Slightly. Um, the same goes for Wolves losing. It makes it easier to navigate 34 without the free hit. But honestly, I'd still rather have the free hit and use it in gimmick 34 than wasting it completely in this game week. Now, I should calculate it actually, just to really have a good idea of what I would have gained. So Ariola would have got three points for me. Um, I would have also had Porro, so that's four points. Uh, Jared Bowen, no, I don't think I would have had him. I would have had Madison instead, so that would be six points. Song Captain, that's 10. Um, Tony, I would have bought in, that's 11. Watkins, 13. I would have taken a minus four hit to get to that. Um, so I would have been on nine points. So I basically gained seven points on my free hit. <laughs> yeah, you've got to laugh, mate. You, you really do. Um, Aaron says, sorry, I meant choose two from Richarlison, Ferdinand, or Garnacho. Ooh, um, Brentford away isn't a bad fixture at the moment. It really isn't. But I think I would go for Richarlison and Foden. I know Arsenal is the toughest defence right now, the most informed team, but benching Foden doesn't sit right with me. So I'd bench Garnacho there, Aaron, and I'd go for Richarlison and Foden. Thank you very much, Kat, for the super chat. Always massively appreciate you're a legend of the channel. Let's enjoy the FPL and UCL break. Cheers. Thank you. I will be on holiday very soon, in around two weeks' time, but the plan is to do the usual deadline streams and all the usual content in terms of videos for both FPL and UCL Fantasy. Thank you very much for that generous uh, super chat. Uh, Elika FC says, got 41 points without using a free hit. Wow, that's incredible. Honestly, fair play to you. Enjoy it. Rat Dog says, best one-week punt this week before wildcarding in 31. Have money to go to anyone, Salah included. Well, for me, Salah is the best captaincy option. I also like the Spurs midfielders in Son and Madison. Um, and also from Chelsea, Palmer and Gusto, I really like. So those are the options that really spring to mind for me. Darwin Nunez at home to Brian could be a great shout, but I want to really call Salah a pun because 
trust me, everyone's going to talk about buying him. It's not going to be anything new. Um, so if Salah counts, of course, he's the number one pick. But if I have to go for someone a bit more differential, um, you know what? I'd probably say one of Palmer Augusto. They really sprang to mind for me. Uh, Courage says, just question my decisions at this point. FPL can do that to you. Um, and same goes for football, so don't worry about it. Sergi says, Salah, Saka, Foden, Palmer, Douglas Louise want to change one, but only have 7.5 million. What's the best pick for me? Thanks. Well, you've got Salah already. That's great. Saka's a long-term hold, in my opinion. Palmer, don't get rid of him at all. I think he's a must-have. Foden, you could argue he's a sell for the next couple of weeks. So you could do something like Louise or Foden to Son for a couple of weeks and then reverse the transfer, especially to, um, to Foden. You know what? It's tricky because Luis faces Wolves at home and he could do really well at Villa Park. He averages over nine points per game in that stadium this season. But yeah, it's between Luis or Foden to Son. That would be my recommended transfer if you really wanted to make that move in the midfield. Be sure to leave any other comments or questions, anything like that, in the comment section down below. And also in the live chat just now, before we wrap up, we have been streaming for just over an hour. It has been a pleasure talking to all of you. If you haven't already, smash the like button and subscribe for new. Let's get this stream to over 200 likes. That'd be massively appreciated. And let's also get to 23K subscribers. That would be also a great thing for the channel. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for my uh, well, all the latest FPL news, your fantasy updates, and also for the content, I put links for my podcast and my video there. There's also the link to the FPL League, Draft Hound, and much more, including Spotify and Amazon Podcasts or Amazon Music, where you can see all of my or listen to all of my content in audio format. So be sure to check that out as well. Um, Nick says, I got 16 points free hit too. Red Arrow, down 4,000 to 99k. Think I'm rolling. Could Darwin cover Salah for a couple of weeks, especially if McAllister stays on pens? Uh, I'll be honest with you, I don't think he does because Salah is the best FPL option in the game. He's averaging a ridiculous number of points every single match. And um, as good as Darwin can be on his day, Salah is reliable. And I don't think Darwin really covers him if you're looking at two or three game weeks at the very least. If it's one week, of course, you never know. But... I'd always fancy Salah in the end. Milner says, Dubravka, Borro, Pau, Kerkes, Palmer, Madison, Son, Captain, Saka, Foden, Watkins, Solanke. As I said, Foden, Kerkes, to Salah, and Robinson, Ain't Nuri is on the cards. Any other uh, suggestions? Um, the thing is with Kerkes, I know he's been terrible in Gemic 28, but Bournemouth could double in 34. And if Kerkes can win his spot back, he could be quite useful there. But honestly, the transfers are good. I have no problems with that whatsoever. I think Aitnuri is an upgrade. Even Robertson could be a shout. That's not too shabby. Um, any other suggestions? I'd probably say Gusto is another defender I really like, apart from Robertson or Aitnuri. That would be my other suggestion. Or even Bradley, so long as Trent is out. Uh, apart from that, you're pretty much on the right track. A goalkeeper transfer could be in the cards in the couple next couple of weeks, but... Yeah, I think what you're suggesting is better. And the same goes for Bradley or Gusto. And right now, Gusto is my preference. He won the Player of the Match award in the FA Cup today. Thank you, Repent, as well. And Nick, always a pleasure. Uh, thank you, Aaron and Joseph. Flecken or Dubravka? Uh, to start this week, <laughs> uh, probably Dubravka. I honestly don't trust any of them. Dreaming FPL says, I have a master plan. I hope so. Uh, Solanke to Manis and KDB to Salah and then in Gimmick 31, Watkins down to Darwin. What do you think? Yeah, that's fine. As much as I like Watkins, with the fixtures in mind and also what downgrading him can do for your team and other transfers in the midfield, I think it does make sense. Uh, I do like that. Now, with Solanke, the only downside to selling him is that he could double in 34. So just bear that in mind. Don't lock that transfer in no matter what you do. KDB to Salah, I like it, even for a hit potentially, but... I think if I had KDB with that record against Arsenal, as good as the Gunners have been this season, especially this calendar year, I'm not sure if I'd sell him for a hit for Salah. But uh, yeah, good transfers. I like the plans, but selling Solanke could backfire. That's my only doubt there. I'm in the top 72 in Wales for UCL Fantasy. That makes me feel a bit better. Yeah, we've always got something to lie back on. Hopefully you can push on in UCL Fantasy and finish top 
in Wales. I wish you the best there, Elliot. Take care as well. And thank you to those that tuned in. Like I said, if you've got any other questions, comments, leave them in the Discord server, my Twitter, Instagram. You can message me there publicly and also in DMs. Uh, leave them in the comment section down below of this video. And also on uh, Amazon Music and Spotify. Leave a five-star review and listen to my podcast there. It really help out the channel to grow even further. And I'm also available on Reddit. Everything you can think of, really, I'm available. So I'll see you very soon for more FPL and UCL Fantasy content. Take care. Enjoy the football. I wish you all the best of luck. The Gamic 30. Let's forget that Blank Gamic 26. Blank Gamic 26? Blank Gamic 29 ever existed. That's been an absolute disaster. And I'll see you next time.